Welcome to the tavern. My name is Josh. I'm Mitch. And Mitch, what's in your tanker today? Uh, today I am drinking Bell's Kalamazoo Stout. And I've got Warsteiner. Cheers. Blink. <sighs> How's yours? Oh, it's bitter. <laughs> is it really? Does yeah. it taste like it's been soaked, like a piece of wood's been soaking in it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here, let me try. Dude, this is so light and refreshing. Oh, oh man. That's like a kick in the teeth. Ooh. It's nice. It's not that heavy. This doesn't feel as heavy as, like, Guinness or something. Yeah, that's fair. You want to switch? Mm-hmm. I like my kick in the teeth. Okay, cool. Ah, so, Mitch, you've got a topic today for a tanker talk. What's on your mind? Yeah, so, um... A big topic and something that uh, I've experienced a lot in uh, parlor LARPs, buffer LARPs, and then in tabletop uh, Wait, games. what are parlor LARPs? What are buffer LARPs? Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, buffer LARPs are the, the, you know, the stereotypical videos that you see online, Firebolt, Firebolt, stuff like that. Uh, except buffer LARPs are infinitely cooler than uh, what you normally see on YouTube and, and videos and stuff like that, or even that, the movie. Um, Boffer LARPs is an immersive experience um, that uh, when combat comes about, you have these foam swords uh, and you hit each other with it. Sounds uh, fun. Oh. Can't go wrong there. Yeah, can't go wrong. It's amazing. I've always had a, an extremely fun time playing it. Um, it's good. Um, get out, get some fresh air. Um, it's a lot of fun. Okay, um, and then what's a parlor LARP? Parlor LARP uh, takes a step, a little, step down a little bit. Um, when um, instead of uh, fighting each other with uh, foam swords and stuff like that, uh, it's generally done via uh, some mechanic, much like in tabletop games, either a dice or a card uh, set. But uh, instead of uh, tabletop, where um, you're kind of your character sometimes, and sometimes you're out of character, and it's a very relaxed, um, chilled out uh, type of environment, Parlor LARP is immersive. Um, you come in, you're your character, you're wearing your character's clothes, you're saying what your character is saying the whole time. Um, and it really relies on kind of like the, the social aspects of games are, are emphasized in, in the whole uh, gaming area of it. Okay, so now that we've defined what the terms are, yes. what's the topic? So, uh, in parlor LARPs, buffer LARPs, tabletop games, uh, there was always um, elements um, of PvP, very, uh, player versus player. Um, Player versus player conflict. Correct, yeah. Um, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Uh, and I want to argue uh, that uh, PvP can be very fun, uh, even in a tabletop setting. Um, I've played in uh, parlor LARPs, um, in Masquerade where we play vampires, where that sort of thing's encouraged. Uh, I've been in buffer LARPs where I've played an evil character and I backstab lots of good characters. Um, and in tabletop games, I've had a lot of conflict, or conflicts with uh, other uh, uh, characters in, in the game. Um, and I think in a game, you need a little bit of that player versus player um, conflict. I think it actually uh, creates some very interesting stories, as long as the, it's done in a mature way and in a good way. But obviously what most people see... Um, and complain about are, are the worst ways of going about it. Yeah, like when I think, when you say PvP, what I think to me is like, okay, we're going through the adventure and then somebody does something that the other, one of the other characters is like definitely going to dislike and then somebody says, uh, okay, well I attack him. Uh, you know, and then usually the defense is, well, this is what my character would do. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, I think is a cop-out because in real life anyway um, yeah. people don't do things even if they strongly disagree with other people they don't do things that mean that they're probably going to get killed like people have a sense of self-preservation so I think that argument <clears throat> isn't good but yeah I think when people think PvP they think um, we're supposed to be playing as a party and now we're fighting each other and then the session's over and sometimes friendships are affected and things like that mm -hmm. so what are you, so you're saying that in tabletop role playing that PvP can be a very positive thing? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because um, I'm gonna say I don't like it generally, <laughs> but it depends on kind of how far. Yeah, you're I'm, I'm someone who generally uh, enjoys it. I, I kind of get dragged down when the uh, when the party's very like you know when they're, they're when they're two together, when it feels like there's rainbows and sunshines and butterflies and everyone's jump high fiving each other after every experience. 
That's, um, what, I, that's what I like. <laughs> now, I like these every now and then. Um, but one, one of my favorite parts of, of role-playing is the conflict between characters. Um, and whenever I approach a tabletop role-playing game, I always have kind of like the cinematic view in mind. You know, what would make for a good TV show? What would make for a good movie? Um, and in most of the TV shows I enjoy, I mean, one that I just watched and you watched recently, uh, Umbrella Academy, there was a lot of conflict between the characters. But, Even PvP. Yeah. Fighting PvP. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And um, I, I think what they, what they do good and what can be passed on to the tabletop role-playing uh, area um, is that you as a viewer, you know by the end of the day um, that these people are together. There's no doubt, at least for me, when I was watching that show, that by the end of it, somehow, some way, they would all band together and do what was needed to be done. Um, and I'm not going to give any spoilers, I might have done that, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's self-evident um, that um, when there is a, a group and there is conflict, um, that in many times in storytelling, that the conflict actually brings them together more so than if they were just together from the beginning. Well, I agree with you, and that's why one we steal something from the drama system every time I run a role-playing game. Drama system by <coughs> Robin D. Laws, Pilgrim Press, uh, where they ask have, each character, ask every other character, what do you want from this character, and why can't you get it? And it's a really good way of establishing some kind of conflict between every character, even if they're brother and sister, or <coughs> maybe especially if they're brother and sister, yeah. even if they're friends, even if one works for the other. I do, I do agree that there should be some conflict. Now, I do think that there is a point at which that conflict can become detrimental to gaming. Um, I don't think anything you just said reaches that. I think, you know, that we have conflicts. It's like kind of a buddy cop movie. Mm -hmm. You know, you're bickering, but then, you know, you know at the end. But I've definitely been in situations, as in a recent game of Cult, where another one of the players, like, hated my character and <laughs> wanted to basically get them fired or destroy their life or something like that. And I definitely didn't feel like we were all going to come together at the end. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> do you think that it needs to be kind of a tacit understanding that the characters are going to end up on the same side to make it work? Yeah, I, I think genre really, really helps in that. Because cult, right? Um, it's, a, it's a pretty hard and horrific setting. Right. Um, you, if I was watching that in a, in a movie, I do not anticipate the characters ever getting together or accomplishing anything other than, like, getting killed this is true um but for kind of like your uh, your, your typical uh tabletop game whether it be um Symbarum or city of mist or anything where you know typically you you understand that the party will mostly be together and you know you'll most likely survive hopefully um i think in those games the uh the understanding should be that hey we're supposed to be a team eventually, if not now, but we're kind of heading towards that direction. All right, I definitely think <clears throat> that there should be that kind of conflict, kind of testing of limits, pushing the other character, uh, trying to basically arrive at a communication. Mm -hmm. I think that's all kind of positive conflict. I think we even see that in like real human relationships and stuff like that. When it, uh, There's got to be a point at which it becomes a problem, and what is that point, and does everybody have the same point? I don't think, I, no, 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 no one has the same point. Uh, really, it's the it's the lowest common denominator, and it is is everyone still having fun? Um, if someone's not having fun, um, then that's when you 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 pause the brakes and you recalibrate. If everyone is having fun, keep going, go for it, see kind of where that boundary is, so that you know uh, when to step off and when to to, to push. Um, because uh, definitely uh, tabletop games are a great avenue for people to kind of explore different feelings and, and ideas and such like that. And um, it, I think it's really cool to kind of explore those those avenues in games. Um, and I've, I've gotten into uh, some arguments with characters in the past and I've loved it. Now I've gotten arguments with other people and uh, I did not like it. Um, so it really depends, uh, you know, like most things in tabletop, it's really... What can your group handle? What can your group? Uh, what does your group want, and what keeps them having fun? So, do you think that you, as a game master, do you have to have some method of introducing a, a framework for PvP before you get started, or something like that, or is it something that you just do through play? Uh, I think uh, I think a good GM definitely talks to their their players uh, before the game starts. Um, to figure out where that line is. I have never done that. I've run in all the games I've ever <laughs> run, and including ones where there has eventually been PvP, which I did not like. 
I've never, and I've never actually been in a game where anybody said, what's everybody's comfort level with PvP? There's been an X card on the table, but yeah. honestly, a lot of times when people feel victimized or something, they don't reach for the X card. Yeah. There's twice when I should have reached for it, yeah. for example. Yeah. So I, we're talking about something that most people don't do. So how, tell us, walk us through how you would actually do that. Uh, I mean, it, it happened in a, in a game uh, that I ran, uh, Mutant Year Zero, a, a couple weeks ago. Um, and it's a, a topic I wished I brought up at the start. Um, and Mutant Year Zero is a game published by Free League, uh, a post-apocalyptic game, um, where resources are scarce um, and you're fighting to survive. Um, that kind of, uh, that genre uh, definitely um, points to some conflict, uh, either between other players or you versus the environment. And the book actually has as one of their events, PvP. Um, you roll that on it in that day, that will kind of be the focus of the story. Um, and it has different scenarios to help uh, to bring that about. Um, in but, a controlled way, probably. Hopefully. Yeah, and but the... Um, I didn't talk to everyone about it prior to, to running Mutant Year Zero, and so um, I had nothing to do with it as a GM. I didn't even bring up the PvP stuff, but we had a character in conflict with the other ones, um, and they got into an argument about, you know, what resources should go where and etc., and one of the players... Uh, you can kind of see it happening as he's talking icily and then it slowly shifts to the OC, you know, instead of saying my character, it's always I and stuff like that. Um, and you see it shift and eventually he, he kind of stopped the game and we had to talk for about an hour about, you know, his desires for the game and expectations and then we had to go through everyone else's to figure out exactly how much PvP we wanted in the game because Mutant Year Zero definitely has uh, PvP in it because you know, post-apocalyptic. When I played it, we didn't have, we never came across that. So is it, so going forward, do you think it's something that you would talk about in the next game that you run, or probably not? Um, I'd like to, um, and, and I feel like I, I should definitely start doing that, especially in games where, um, I can foresee a possibility, because, um, uh, especially in post-apocalyptic or harder games, I usually don't have to expect this in like a D and D or a Symbarum, or no, sometimes in Symbarum. Um, there are games that I, that I probably should do it and will do it, um, and there are games that I probably will wait until it occurs, just because I don't, I don't see the likeliness of it occurring. But do you think it's ever good when players start shooting other players, <laughs> attacking other players? Uh, in the right context, yes. And what is the right context? Um, I think it is, I mean, no one, first off, generally, uh, people don't like losing a character. Everyone uh, puts a lot of effort into it. And if you're going to die, you at least want to go out in a way that you can talk about later on. Um, so I definitely don't condone, condone the death of a killing of another character without at least talking to that player uh, first. Uh, or if you're just running that type of game. Um... <clears throat> but if you're attacking um, uh, and it's, it's it's appropriate, if you have the right group, then then yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I, I've had lots of times where um, a conflict would arise, and you know, the character, uh, as much as you see in TV shows and cinema, will come up and slug the guy right in the face, and it's really just to kind of communicate that conflict in a aggressive and physical manner. Yeah, maybe they should be punching each other. I think the problem is we're dealing a lot of times with heavily armed characters with swords and bows and yeah. the last the last few times uh, one of them had a gun. Um, every time that I can remember where there was actual violence between players, I'm thinking of two specific <coughs> instances. One, it ended the game and one of the players, one of the one who died didn't ever come back. The second, it one of the players was kind of on edge the rest of the time and eventually ended up leaving the group. So I guess what I'm saying is that in both those cases, the person's personalities of the actual players became involved in the violent PvP that was happening. It was not just a thing between characters. Oh, yeah. And my the, baby. The baby's crying, so we're going to cut. Okay, we're back. Uh, ignore the baby. Yeah. So uh, what I'm saying is that in, in both the, PV, the bad PvP instances that I can think of, um, it wasn't by any kind of tacit agreement among the players that they were going to allow a certain level of conflict. It was basically two people having it. It was one problem player having a personality conflict with other players 
um, which was being sublimated through their characters and which kind of exploded in then those other characters saying, I shoot him. Yeah. I mean, that's how it generally works out, which I think is why PvP has such a bad name, is a lot of the people um, are, are making it a OOC or out of character um, uh, issue. Um, but if, if, I mean, if everyone just has an understanding that it's, it's just a game and um, that you're trying to create these interesting stories and that no one's out to get anyone else's character, um, that it, it's all right. Okay, and you could say that, but in the cases I'm thinking of, if that had been the case, then one of the other people would say, and listen, this is nothing against you personally, <laughs> I've, John. I've had that before. <laughs> like, it's, it, nobody says that. People are like, they're mad. Yeah. So it's not like what you're talking about. Yeah. It's actually people have become emotionally out of control within the you know, outside, yeah. out, out of character. And I like, so the, the response of using weapons, uh, I felt were... Um, is usually not necessary. Could you, for example, as the Game Master say, I'm not letting you guys attack each other with weapons. Mm -hmm. Drop your weapons, roll up your sleeves, and, f and duke it out. I think that would be cool. Like, non-lethal, yeah. whoever gets reduced to zero with the punches, yeah. you know, or whatever, yeah, or, or five or, rounds. Or at least, like, you know, um, uh, just pause the game for a little bit and be like, look, um, are you guys okay? And where do you guys want this to go? Because that happens in movies. That the, some of the heroes punch each other out, but one hero never kills the other hero. Exactly. Halfway right? through the mission. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we hope that, that that has been you know helpful for people. And there's a couple strategies. Uh, you know, you can introduce at the beginning, and then if you feel that emotions are taking over, you can have people step back and say, you know. Uh, we want to make sure this isn't personal, but probably if it's gotten to that point, what you really might want to do is say, drop your weapons, roll up your sleeves, and put up your dukes. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the, the best, most important key is communication. Talk talk to your players, Always. talk to each other all the time. Communicate, communicate. That's the refrain. That's what it's all about. That's what being a good GM is about, and we're going to probably cover that in a thousand different ways in future Tanker Talks. And as always, yeah. you should uh, tell us what you think down in the comments, what you think about the discussion, and uh, how, you know, how you would handle it, and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, we can, we can sort of see what everybody's opinions are. Yeah, because it's a, it's a topic. Cheers, Mitchell. <laughs> Cheers. Ah. Mm. No, oh, it has, actually has M on it. Yeah. So, so what's your well, we got M. I oh. got them at a, uh, at a <laughs> thrift store. I saw them and I was like, I have to have these. <laughs> like, you can see through them. See, this is what they mean by beer goggles. Oh, can you see through mine? Oh, yeah. yeah. And we're pretty sure these are not made out of like a lead carrying material that gives you cancer. Yes, we'll I find mean. out. I'm no chemist. <laughs> Alright, buddy.